Antoine, Amir, thank you for being with us today. Good uh, afternoon. In these next 30 minutes, we'd like to discuss your work at Taos and what it has to do with data sharing. Um, and I'm sure you know, but whoever, whoever is listening or watching this, um, we are joined by Taos, who originally started as a think tank to um, automate and innovate translation. It began by evangelizing the simple idea that machine translation is a useful tool for the translation industry and emphasized the need for innovation, open platforms, and cross-industry cooperation. It became the Language Data Network, offering the largest industry-shared repository of data, deep know-how in language engineering, and a network of human language project workers around the globe. Their mission today is to empower global enterprises and their services and technology providers with data solutions that help them communicate in all languages. Uh, now, I will be interviewing you today as part of the European Commission's Center for Data Sharing. Um, this is an initiative by the European Commission that supports the development of the digital single market. Our objective here is to facilitate data sharing. That means translation, transactions in which data held by the public or private sector are made available to other organizations, be it public or private, uh, for use and reuse. We do this in a number of ways, by researching, documenting, and reporting about the data sharing practices, EU legal frameworks, and access to distribution technology. The practices that we select are not only relevant to organizations, but often also imply novel models or overcome legal or technological challenges in a new way. We regularly interview data sharing practitioners like yourselves for this initiative, and we capture, capture these in our collection of practice examples. Our talk today will be part of this collection too. I'd like to talk to you about the work you do at Taos and your global network of data contributors. But before we get into it, would you like to introduce yourselves? Sure, hi. So my name is Antoine. I've been with Taos um, for just under a year now in the in the sales team, but um, also involved in um, any activities where we promote uh, our activities. Um, and uh, been involved, uh, among other things, with the European Commission a couple of months ago in the <clears throat> workshops around the uh, language data set, uh, data space, sorry, initiative. Nice to be here today. Yeah, hi, uh, thanks for inviting us. My name is Ahmed Kamran. Uh, I'm with Taos for the last five years. Uh, currently, I'm uh, working as a solution expert. Uh, my background is natural language processing and computer science. So what we are trying to do is how we can bring as much as uh, innovative solutions that involves uh, NLP to Taos that can help us, uh, you know, build larger and bigger um, data sharing platforms and data models. And uh, we can help machine translation industry uh, to, to, you know, facilitate with this effort. Nice, thank you. And could you maybe give us a brief introduction of and the repository that you built? Yeah, so uh, I can start with that. Um, so as you already mentioned that Taos in, initially started as a think tank and um, in, in, in the very early stages of Taos, like 15 years ago, our um, founder, uh, Jaf van der Meer, he has a you know very clear vision that a machine translation will going to be a reality in few years. And that was a very correct prediction. So very early uh, from the very beginning, Taos started to collect data. So we convinced all the major players, all the big IT companies, big tech companies who are um, in this uh, realm of uh, translation industry or who are looking forward to machine translation, they agreed to share data. And at that time, we built a very simple repository where um, anyone can share their translation memories and when they share the, their memories, they can earn some credits uh, based on that. They can download uh, the data that other people are sharing. So that was a very simple sharing model. Uh, but over the years, uh, in the last uh, 10, 15 years, what we realized that uh, the people who need the data are different from people who own the data. And in, 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 in many cases, the, the people who are training these empty models or who are the data um, users, they are not willing to share their own data because, because of you know a lot of uh, restrictions, because of uh, copyrights, because of other internal uh, policies. So that everyone is looking for data, but 
uh, we have to identify the different groups who, who have the data and who are willing to share and who are willing to consume that and, and buy the data. So we, we transform this whole model of data sharing into a marketplace. And um, we were very uh, happy that uh, European Commission funded this project and we managed to build a, a platform where um, sellers and buyers can come together and, and utilize this platform, not only to share data, but also it helps uh, uh, to uh, make sure that the, the data is high quality. So we, we built a lot of NLP tools within the marketplace so that uh, it can facilitate the, the sellers to make sure that, that their data is good enough, high quality, and um, we can provide all, all different sort of curation and cleaning and uh, embeddings uh, based um, uh, algorithms there. Uh, they didn't have to worry about anything. And then for the set, uh, buyer side, uh, they can reach to the right data uh, the data that they are looking for different domains maybe uh, different language pairs and and the data is uh, uh, straight away ready for the empty training so they don't have to do much afterwards so that was the whole idea and we built the marketplace uh, you know uh, around that uh, idea then maybe as a follow-up question from uh, from this story um how do you ensure that um the the user so the buyers needs um, are met uh, as well as the sellers so how do you match them together you mentioned um, if uh, if a data set is of, of a high quality it's easier um, to get it across um, how do you like are there any sort of quality checks for that or or ratings or or how does that work yeah so. Um... Uh, Antoine, anytime if you want to chip in, you can. So maybe I can continue with this one as well. Um, so there are a number of things that we we have done. So we have uh, because we were trust, uh, you know, uh, converting a old uh, data repository into this new marketplace. So we already had a lot of legacy data that was coming from from that. But then we did a big marketing campaign to actually um, bring new sellers who can bring new and fresh data in different domains in different language pairs. And then we are actively, you know, uh, going out and promoting this so that uh, people can fill this data gap. And we are reaching into different markets like uh, India or Africa, where you know all these low resource languages are there. Because this is one of the major um, uh, uh, outcome of this project is to bring uh, low resource language language data to the marketplace. So that was one of our um, active drive that we are looking for this kind of um, uh, sellers. But then the tools that we are providing, uh, that is also helping uh, to uh, locate the data that is kind of hidden uh, within, within this huge repository. Because what, what used to happen is that some people are sharing data, which, which is in uh, in big, big TMX files, and it is a mix of domains. So they are just you know uploading their historical translation memory, and it has a lot of different content. What we managed to do uh, with our uh, matching data algorithm is that if you are looking for a particular domain, you can provide us some example segments, and then we can actually search within this huge repository uh, which segments are identical to this, these segments. And this way, we can actually reach to only a part of the repository, which is uh, which is required or which is the the need of uh, a buyer, and then they can just extract that uh, sentence by sentence extract that part of the repository and use that so that that's a slightly different idea from uh, other repositories because in other repositories you have to uh, operate on files so you can you know access the file you have to download the whole file and only then you can filter uh, what you need or what you don't need from that and now we are actually focusing on sentence based uh, repository where uh, you can actually generate virtual uh, documents on the fly and then use that so that's one of the big differentiator. Sounds like uh, uh, you tackled quite a big problem there. Yeah, we, we tried. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and then, um, well, uh, we mentioned the type of data, um, but then who are uh, involved in this network? So what are the typical buyers and sellers? Yeah, Antoine, I think this is good for you. Sure, yeah, variety really, um, especially if you look at contributors uh, who upload data, 
uh, can be so Amir mentioned um, uh, players from big tech companies, um, that, but it can also be uh, individuals who happen to have uh, bilingual or multilingual data um, and they want to to monetize it, uh, or people who are on a mission to uh, promote underrepresented either languages or domains even. Um, so it can be, could be something in, from English to Spanish, but an underrepresented domain, or it can be lang languages that you don't find easily. Um, so that's for the contributor side and on the, the buyer side, so it remains mostly um, big tech companies that have a need to um, add to their offering. Uh, and what they want to add is precisely those underrepresented or hard to find resources. Um, so for instance, if you're a, a company who's developing a machine translation engine, and you want to add a new language pair or 50 new language pairs to your model, existing model, um, you're going to need data <clears throat> to feed your algorithms <clears throat> to to train them um, to 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 perform better. Um, and so this is uh, the, the type of um, buyer that we have on the marketplace typically. Hypothetically, would, would Amazon ask you for data if they need to do a sentiment analysis on their customer review? That's something different. Sentiment analysis is a service that you can perform on data. The marketplace is a place where you exchange data itself. Uh, and Amir mentioned a few services that we do to clean the data to make it usable. Um, but something like sentiment analysis is a type of service that you can perform on top of that. Um, so with the data, you have it and you look at it and you put a label on it. Um, so you look at sentence by sentence <clears throat> and um, this file or these files which are made of sentences and I want to know what people are saying. Um, maybe the, the sentences are coming from uh, the the chats that their customer service agents have with their users, or maybe the the sentences are coming from um, they've been crawling Facebook and other social media platforms and just crawling and collecting sentences about their company uh, from users, and they want to know what's being said. Is it positive? Is it negative? And uh, so that's something that you could um, apply NLP to 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 achieve for companies like uh, like this in, in DDS. And, and, and also, uh, when we built this marketplace place, we, we knew that this will uh, not going to be the only solution because this is not uh, enough. We cannot have uh, data for everything uh, and the data needs are you know growing so uh, every day uh, some company will come to us and they ask for something that we don't have so in parallel we also built a human language platform where we are actually generating data so uh, to answer your specific uh, query like uh, can someone get a data set from us that has uh, sentiment tags there so that they can tra train a segment you know sentiment uh, uh, analyzer uh, that we can actually generate. So we can take data from marketplace, uh, you know, bilingual data, and then we can ask humans to add those uh, tags to that. And then that will become a different data set and then uh, uh, a buyer or a data consumer can use that. So we have these two platforms that are interacting with each other and filling the gaps where humans are needed. We are putting in, uh, bringing in the human language platform and where we have uh, off the shelf data available, we can use the data marketplace. Got it. Thank you for the clarification. Um, and then could you maybe name an example of a real life uh, case that platform help? Um, so uh, recently what we actually published a report about uh, how you can actually customize uh, the big empty engines with the uh, domain specific data set. So what is happening right now is that a lot of people are using machine translation engines 
but they want to use it for very specific scenarios. So for example, customer support is uh, a big uh, use case. So a lot of companies who need uh, machine translation to be very good uh, in the customer support domain, they cannot directly use just the uh, uh, you know, readily available vanilla uh, models because those models are general and uh, for specific domains, they, they still have uh, you know, mistakes or uh, they, they lack in, in, in fluency, for example, or you know, the right terminology. So what we can do is we can actually um, use uh, domain specific data and maybe very specific to the customer needs. We can take their example sentences and generate a larger corpora for that. And then we can customize these empty engines. We call this service uh, data enhanced machine translation, DEMT. And then uh, the customized engines are much better. We, we showed in the report that you can gain up to 25% of improvement and that you can actually directly use. And even in some cases, you can actually even remove the post editing part because the quality is um, uh, acceptable so that you can actually directly put that model into your production or um, in a live conversation, for example. So that is one use case that we recently developed and we develop a service on top of that, the data enhanced machine translation. And now we are offering models and we are offering services to, to clients uh, so that we can build these models for their specific needs. Um, and um, so this is actually a good example. Thank you. Um, mindful of time, um, I would like to maybe go ahead um, to actually uh, our last question. I think it would be really interesting to know um, what would be the cost of not sharing language data? Yeah, that's actually an interesting uh, question because um, all of us has, uh, are working um, towards the, the the same goal because language is a barrier and we want to break that. So, you know, European Commission is doing their part and other companies are coming up with these algorithms and, you know, uh, artificial intelligence uh, techniques. Uh, we are in the data space. We are trying to bring as much data as possible. Uh, if people will not going to share the, the data uh, or for specific languages or for specific domains, then we will not be able to achieve this uh, goal that we have in common. So we will not be able to break the language barrier. So I think it's very important that uh, everyone understand uh, this idea that sharing the, the language data will going to eventually help everyone and uh, and uh, the, the, the person who is sharing or the company who is sharing as well, because ultimately we want to uh, develop uh, uh, you know, services where we don't have to worry about language and everyone can understand all the content that all the information that is out there. Yeah, that seems like a, a, a nice pan-European goal. Yeah. Definitely. Um, is there anything from your side that you would like to add that we didn't discuss? You want to add something, Antoine? Uh, well, I just wanted to to say to the the previous question that um, I mean it's the <clears throat> the goal of humanity. You know, so if we want to to exist together, we need to exchange, right? We 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 all contribute to each other's um, uh, well being. So uh, that's how sharing is how we 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 do that. Uh, and in particular languages, uh, we there. They can represent barriers, so uh, bringing those down is definitely helpful. Um, and if we can do so, and as we do so, help locally with uh, communities. Um, uh, I, I talked about the the marketplace contributors, um, and uh, I think there was an example of um, I think it was a doctor from Syria. Who was able to to use data that he had accumulated, um, not client, not patient data, um, but uh, he was able to to use his data <clears throat> and monetize it um, in in this manner, just as a very very uh, small real life example. Yeah, and I believe there there are plenty more like these. Um, is there um any way for for us to find out um, what what the applications um, are that are being created uh, 
for instance, is there a, a locate? Maybe you have this online somewhere. Have yeah, exactly. We track record of the, of we do thing. have we do have that indeed uh, on our website. I think it's under resources, uh, and uh, from there you go to use cases. Uh, I believe. Um, anyways, we can share a link with you. We'd be happy to do that, um, where you can find examples, concrete examples of how data is used and uh, success stories of um, um, buyers and sellers and how they've uh, been able to leverage data uh, to to make a better life for themselves and uh, make their projects more successful. Nice. Forward to that. For now, I would like to thank you for being with us today. Uh, I'm very thank you. happy that I got to learn, uh, learn about us and I think our audience will too. Um, thank you. It seems like a very relevant project uh, and overcoming Language barriers is something very close to our hearts as the support center for data sharing. Um, so it was a true pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for inviting us. Thank you very much. Thanks.